So a few months ago, I got some comments telling me to do the Skulk Infection mod. I didn't want to do it because I was in the middle of doing the Frozen Apocalypse project. And I also just didn't think I would survive it. But after finishing the Frozen Apocalypse, I gained some confidence and I was like, surely I'm able to beat this within one or two tries. Ah! What the? Please stop. This dude just do so much damage. I think I've established enough of me being bad at the game. Literally skill issue. See all this beautiful land? Very neat, right? Yeah, that don't last long. You see, another guy commented about how he has a phobia of mold. And because of that guy, I'm gonna be calling this the blue mold outbreak. It looks very eerie at night, but you have things like infected skeleton, zombies, cows, these little bugs. I don't know if they're parasites or slugs. I don't know what they are. I mean, like usually in mods, they don't touch creepers. Creepers are like neutral to everything. But inside of here, they got the creeper. That's saying a lot. You have these things. I have, I don't know what they're called, but they're really annoying. Some pillagers, giant phantoms, and then you have this big boy. This is a boss. Every 10 days, there's gonna be a horde knight, and eventually, this guy is gonna be spawning inside of those horde knights. And there's a chance for multiple of them to show up too inside of those horde knights. The goal is simple survive, outrun the blue mold, and make it to 000 and destroy the brain within the fortress. I also just wanna go there because it looks cool. I get people telling me to upload the mod pack. I, I don't know how to do that. If somebody can tell me how to upload it with my configurations that I've used, do let me know. I do go into these mods heavily blind. I look at the bare minimum. If you have any other ideas on what do you want to see me do, just comment below. Leave a like if you enjoyed this and we are pretty close to 100,000. Might give away like a, a graphics card or something. I, I don't know. So please do subscribe. These videos take a long time to make. I do also stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Naringto. But enough with that. Trying to survive 100 days against the blue mold outbreak okay day one so around two minutes after i spawn the blue mold will awaken and start moving i want to find the village as quickly as i possibly can and there was a village like right by where i spawned luckily so i go in there i steal a bed get some wood and i make a wooden axe i didn't bother with the pickaxe because I'm just gonna take out the iron golem and hopefully it'll give me three iron. That way I can have an iron pickaxe. While I was getting more wood, the mole had awakened. Kind of send me in for a little shock or slight panic mode to make me move faster. You see, the mold, it spawns where I spawn. So the faster I get out of that chunk, the better. I want to use the first few days as preparation before the horde night. So I kill the iron golem. I get some hay. I loot the chest. The chest only had apples, which is really good. It's exactly what I need. I grab some more wood and I head out the village. While traveling, I did get some sand and I need this sand mainly because i need tnt i'll explain why i need tnt in a bit also from now on for every 100 days i'm gonna have some kind of role to hinder my run and for this i'm not allowed to use mending which honestly i regret a lot because i have to spend so many days mining and it's just really annoying but anyway, I wanted to do underwater mining. That way I can find diamonds as quickly as I possibly can. I seriously do not know what it is with me, but I cannot do normal mining and find diamonds quickly. But I don't like underwater mining because it makes me feel weak. But with my current situation, I don't really have a choice. So I saw some pretty colors and I was like, well, this might be a good spot to mine. So I make a door. And I go back, and as soon as I started mining, I see the inside of this cave. I don't know what this kind of cave is called, but I really enjoy it because it looks cool. Very nice colors. I think axolotl spawn inside of this little biome or thing. As soon as I got in there, there I found diamonds, which was great. Diamonds on day one. Lucky, very lucky. The thing that I need the most is diamonds, gold, and iron. So those are the things that I'm gonna be picking up the most. So with the little daylight I had left, I just picked that up. I did go to bed this time, mainly to keep track of time in some kind of way. The next few days, I won't be going to bed because I need as much time as I possibly can before this horde night. So day two, I make a furnace and I tried to smell my iron. 
I don't have any fuel. I don't know what it is with this place too. I could not find coal at all. I wasn't gonna use my wood, but I didn't wanna use the wood because that would require me to go back to the surface and get wood. There's these things called lucky gobber blocks. It drops food and fuel. I used the fuel that I got from the lucky block and I smelted my iron. The one iron that I did get from using the wood, I made a shield. I wanted to get some flint from the gravel, but every time I broke a gravel block, the gravel just fell. And there was mobs below where the gravel was, and I don't have any weapons, and I, I, I'm not doing that. No thanks. While mining, the mold had developed more. I don't exactly know. I, I don't know what it changes when it does that. After some more iron has been smelted, I wanted to make a halberd. There's so many weapons that I wanted to make. I didn't want to just use one weapon. So more mobs were spawning now. I think it's because it was pretty much nighttime. And I need these creepers to blow up this blue block. These blue blocks, you can only mine with a netherite pickaxe. I obviously can't get that. So I thought to myself, well, if I use TNT on it, maybe I should be able to pick it up, right? That's exactly what it does. So I use creepers as these things to blow it up so I can pick it up. The more creepers that spawn, though, the better for me. As time was progressing, I was thinking to myself that maybe I should kill the creepers instead of just letting them explode on the block because their radius isn't that big. So I might as well just, you know, get the gunpowder and make the TNT myself. That way it can be a little bit quicker or have a bigger radius, maybe. And since we're in deep slate too, the creepers don't really make a big boom. I once again tried to get some flint now that I had some kind of defense on me. While doing that, there was some gold under the gravel too. I tried to go to bed just to see if it was nighttime to make sure it was nighttime. That was the only way to keep track of time. If anyone else knows how to keep track of time, can they tell me? Because I, I don't know, but pretty much for the rest of the night, I was killing as many creepers as I possibly could to get the gunpowder that I needed. And I had a lot of trial and error trying to get these dudes to because they would constantly explode. Even when I like hit them and it went far away, they don't care. They still explode and I don't know why, but eventually I had enough gunpowder to make some TNT. I also found some more diamonds. I find a lot of diamonds and what's crazy is I find more diamonds in this run than I do coal. So I try to look for a spot where there's like four or five of the gobber ingots and one sitting. I do find the nice spot. I make some TNT. I needed iron to make my flint and there was a random zombie that just appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> But after taking that out and getting my iron, I make my flint and steel and light the TNT. So I only need one more of the gobber thing because you need nine of these in order to get a gobber ingot. As I was mining, I entered the room full of skeletons. that I just cannot kill these creepers correctly. But it moves on to day three and I make some more iron. My shield was dying, so I had to make another shield. I only needed two gunpowder to make TNT. I went back to the old area that I was in and there was creepers there. It's like I, go, I leave a place, I go to a new place, I leave a place, I go back to the old place, mobs spawn there. And again, I just constantly get creepers. But the issue is I suck at killing them. I was starting to get afraid of being inside of the same area because I wasn't sure if the infection was keeping up with me. I was going to leave the place that I was in. I saw the gobber blocks the blue ore inside a regular stone instead of deep slate. So I went back and I just continued mining gold and all this other stuff that I can get. But I do walk into a new area and I find some more diamonds. And I still have not seen a single piece of coal. I've only found diamonds and I was greeted by my main man, Goblin Trader. It doesn't matter what situation is going on. Goblin Trader is always there. I do eventually kill another creeper, get the gunpowder. But the new issue is I got lost and I don't know where I came from. I tried to find out where I was coming from. I was practically running in circles. I had to look at the footage of the recordings to find out where I was coming from. And and even then, I still kind of struggled to get back to where I was. Eventually, I do figure it out and I get back to where I was and I go straight to the place where the gobber was in stone.
Oh, it gives me three from one of them? I didn't know that. I thought I had to do it one by one. Oh, I got this. I left the little place that I was in. I went out to get some wood. Now, the thing is, right? Here's the new issue. With the gobber, you can't use wood. You have to use pure gobber, meaning I have to find yet another nine of these goblets, meaning more TNT, more time that I have to spend inside of this area because I don't know where else to go. I wanted to go deeper inside of the cave to see if there was more things worth getting like diamonds and other stuff like that. I also needed more creepers. I set a door down so I can not get lost and I finally found coal, meaning I can make torches now. And my main man goblin trader was still there. I stumbled upon another place and got some diamonds and I found a raw block of iron. I don't know if that's rare or not. Someone can tell. I, I don't know if that's rare, but I was astounded by finding that, like actually baffled. While trying to find some more creepers, another goblin trader had showed up and this, this hurt me. Creepers are gonna spawn. Yo, there you go. Goblin trader. Hello there. Gunpowder. No. I need emeralds. Wait, cobblestone? That work for you? No, it doesn't. It was probably one of the saddest moments to me. He had exactly what I needed, but he wanted emerald. And of all things he wanted for emerald was cobblestone. And I'm surrounded by literally nothing but deep slate. I ended up going to this other area that was full of like spiders, creepers, and skeletons. I sat here and I killed the mobs. Once I killed those creepers there, I tried to go back to where I came from and I I got lost again. Like I used coordinates, but I feel like I need to use coordinates more because I went in a complete circle and it was making me mad. But the good part about going in the circle was when I got back to where I was, there was creepers again. So creepers spawned where I was. The one creeper that I did end up killing didn't drop any gunpowder, which made me a little bit upset. I eventually found Goblin Trader again and I wanted him to give me some directions. Goblin Trader. Goblin Trader, which way did we come from? It was. Thank God, Goblin Trader. If I could leave Goblin Trader a tip, I would give him one. And I think you should too. I think he says to subscribe to me. This time, I step into a new area, but I don't go too far in because I, I don't want to get lost again. But I see some more of the pretty green colors. And I see some spiders and creepers. And I take care of the spiders and creepers. They gave me enough gunpowder in order to make TNT. I checked the day and it was day five now. I made it back to where the entrance was into this whole cave that I was in. And I tried to kill more creepers. The creepers didn't drop me anything. This is same thing. I'll take it. I did get creepers really, really easily, and they both dropped me two gunpowder. Just in case. I finally was able to make my gobber pickaxe. Now I'm able to just pick up the goblets, no problem. I don't need TNT anymore, which makes my life a lot easier. So I spent the rest of day five just getting as much gobber as I possibly can. Once I had enough to make a chest piece, I wanted to make a chest piece. But the issue is you can't make it with just gobber. You need emerald, which I find so dumb. I go up to the surface because now I need to go look for a village, but it was raining pretty hard and I can't see in the rain either. So I go back and I go to bed. Day six, I nearly died of quicksand. Quicksand. Kidding me? I'm not gonna talk about that. Let's just talk about how amazing I am for getting out of it in the first place without dying. I did find a broken nether portal and I hate that I did this and I regret it heavily. And I don't know why I didn't do it. I didn't pick up the gold block that was sitting right there inside of the broken nether portal. Gold is stupidly important for this run. So I had to travel some water for the direction that I was going in and I made me a boat. I didn't wanna go through the jungle. I hate 
jungles. I despise jungles. I will probably survive 100 days inside of a jungle. Call it the Amazon, Safari, whatever. But I truly hate the jungle more than any other biome inside of this game. I hate it with a burning passion. Anyway, I make it to land and I traveled for a while. I finally found the village and I pick up some flint. That way I can make a fletching table. I was scouting around the village and I was not seeing any villagers. I thought that it was just like wiped out or something but eventually i found this villager's like i guess it corrupted the way that the village spawned i i don't know but he was like stuck in some rocks i sat down my fletching table the guy just stares at me walks on top of my fletching table and just walks off i was about to pick up my fletching table but then another villager just came up and worked as a fletcher so i do a trade with him and just like that i have my first gobber armor for day seven in the morning i made me some more glob and turned it into gobber ingot. I then started chopping down some trees and getting logs. That way I can do much, much trades with the main men. I accidentally picked up arrows. I'm not gonna use bows and arrows, just run to just pure melee. After trading, I made me a gobber helmet. I wanted to make me a gobber scythe for no other reason than it looks cool. I don't have any other reason besides that. I just, I wanted a scythe. But I do some more trades and then I pick up my stuff and leave. Now I have to look for yet another place to mine so I can get some gobber. I do find this one area, but it didn't look interesting. There was barely any colors at all, which just doesn't really speak. Ah, there's there's ingots over here. Yes, that is that is exactly the way I operate. Ooh, pretty colors. I was getting attacked, but it was nothing too serious. So I took them out and then I ended up leaving. Considering how close I was to the horde night, I really didn't want to go to bed. I wanted to make as much time as I possibly could before that horde night. The first horde night is going to be simple because it's only the first wave, but I'm not risking it considering how many times I've died trying to get a good run inside of this game. I get out of the place that I was at. I ignore the mobs that were shooting me because I'm just not going to waste time on them. I hop in a body of water and I see much, much colors inside of it. Now, I look, I know I said I don't like to do underwater mining because it makes me feel weak, but again, I don't have a choice in this water i did find much diamonds lots and lots of diamonds i was very glad about finding this stuff i was getting all the diamonds and all the gobber that i possibly need i pretty much spent the rest of the night just getting as much as i can possibly get while doing so it turned to day eight so for day eight i spent this day just getting as much gobber and diamonds as i possibly could get to i did make me some gobber pants i also made me gobber boots after making the boots i made me a halberd but I was getting, I was legit getting stacked on diamonds. Like I've never found this many diamonds this quickly in my life. I was feeling amazing. I was feeling like the man, but I do start making my other tools. I accidentally made me a sigh. I used this sigh probably a total of three times for this entire run, but I made me a rapier or a rapier and a scythe. Once I was done making all my tools, I wanted to get out of the water, but I saw this alligator that was just hovering over me, but I managed to just slip past him and get out the water anyway. I was greeted by quite a bit of mobs. Jesus. So on the next morning, day nine, I clean up around this broken nether portal. Now, the thing about this broken nether portal is I completely ignored it, okay? I completely ignored this broken nether portal. I didn't check the chest. I didn't grab the gold block on top of the nether portal. And I don't know why I just absolutely smooth brain two nether portals, but it makes me angry because I also needed the crying obsidian. That was a thing that I was struggling to look for. Anyway, I try to make me a bucket. And I was greeted by this creeper that was just walking up on me. The reason why I wanted to make a bucket was so I can get some water, go to a lava pool, and get some obsidian. That way I can make an enchanting table. Which, again, brings me to the nether portal. Why didn't I just pick up the obsidian from the broken nether portal? What was I thinking? So I eventually find another village, or I thought it was another village, but it was actually just the village that I was at before. I, I just didn't loot it. I leave that village, I travel out for a while, and I find a lava pool. I get some obsidian, and I tried to make 
my enchanting table. But then I remember, oh wait, I actually need a book. So I can't even make this enchanting table. I find another village, an actual new village. I was hoping there was a librarian there, but there wasn't. I tried to loot it. There was only some apples, which is good. But that was all the village had to really offer. And I just left the village after that. The morning of day 10, I take out some horses or I take care of some horses and cows. And that way I can get some leather. I make me a cutting board so I can get tree bark. I completely forgot about about sugarcane because of the last 100 days that I did sugarcane was so rare it kind of like in my brain I just did not really think about sugarcane I didn't remember sugarcane was a thing until way later but I used my cutting board I get some tree bark that way I can turn the tree bark into paper turn the paper into a book and I make my enchanting table obviously not gonna use this yet because I don't have any bookshelves so I'm gonna look for some more cows before I actually do that. But eventually I do find some cows, but they were not dropping me leather. They were only giving me meat. This is the last day before the horde night. So if I had to enchant at night, I would. I did find another village and I actually found the librarian, but when I was looking around for the librarian, I couldn't find him. So I just picked up the lectern, but there was an issue that I had discovered. Who, I, what? Why is there so many farmers? Get this out of here. Why is there so many farmers? Gone. Who am I firing? Why? Okay. There was a lot, a lot of farmers and I do not know why. So I end up kidnapping a villager. I put him inside of the hut and I lock him inside of there until he was able to give me something good. What I wanted was life steal or sharpness five. That way I can put it on my hellbird. But this guy was not giving me anything at all. Nothing useful. I did see some sugar cane and this, this also makes me angry. So I try to pick up some sugar cane, right? Now here's the thing. I go inside my inventory. I see that I have iron nuggets. I make the iron nuggets into iron ingots. That way I can have space inside of my inventory, right? So I do that, I take it out, I throw away the iron nuggets after I'm done, like the, the little extra iron nuggets that I have, but I don't go back and pick up all that sugar cane that I just dropped. I just ignore it and leave. And I walk past some more sugar cane and I don't pick it up. I swear that that 100 days that I did for the last run absolutely ruined my brain. But I find some more cows and I take out those cows and get some more leather. I didn't want to go to sleep because again, I need as much time as I can possibly get to prepare against this blue mold. So I take out all kinds of cows and horses and do what I need to do. The sun eventually rises and it's now day 11. I use this day to get as much tree bark as I possibly can. I did take out an enderman. I took it out mainly because because I wanted to ender pearl. That way I have some kind of form of escape. This is probably the only like regular enderman I've seen through the entire run too. But I just spend majority of my day or like pretty much the entire day really just getting tree bark and getting paper. I really wished I remembered the whole sugar cane thing because this process could have been a lot easier for me. I only end up getting like six bookshelves, seven bookshelves, and that was about it. I started enchanting my tools on the Hellbird, they gave me fire. On the scythe, I got sharpness. The rapier, the sweeping edge, just pretty, pretty basic stuff for everything, really. For my armor, I really just got protection. But I saw this other enchantment that I didn't know what it was. It was called Weightless, and I wanted to know what it did. So I looked it up. Pretty much makes you faster, which I guess makes sense if you think about it. So instead, I just got more protection. And on my boots, I got feather falling. I've never used feather falling before. So this is my first time ever actually using it. But I wanted to make a grinder. And when I tried to get some stone, I was right by where a spawner was on the surface. It was a spider spawner. The chest didn't have anything inside of there that good, really. I had a golden apple. That was about it. I did one last enchantment on my side. And then the night began. I need to get out of this area. I need a clear area.
I never use my rapier. That's crazy. Okay, hold up. Wait a minute. I gotta use. Wow. Getting chained away. Right. I'm about to be surrounded by this stuff. I can't see these things. Burrowed again. Oh, shield is gone. That's not good. I'm just getting chain burrowed and I can't do anything about it. Wow. Burrowed again, man. Let me get this. That's just wonderful. 
I need to get out of here because an Enderman is gonna want to be here, and I I don't. I still have upgrading to do. Okay, I made it out. So I wanted to enchant things. I wanted better enchantments, really. And I also needed more gobber in order to repair my armor because pretty much after every horde night, my armor depletes by a lot. Last time I did try to survive with like iron armor and I got like two shot or something like that. It was, it was bad. I tried to escape the blue mold. That way I can find a place to mine. I was seeing the blue mold on parts of mountains and stuff like that. It was already moving pretty quickly, meaning I have to get out of that area. I really don't want to deal with an Enderman. I don't have any potions of purity or anything. I also want to build a base. I want to build a base out of brick. I thought it would just look cool inside of like some kind of apocalyptic thing. And so I wanted to use bricks. But the issue is there is literally no possible way in my knowledge that I know how to build a base, mainly because how the hell am I going to do that? I am constantly being chased by this infection and they take over literally every block inside of the game. And even if I were to make some kind of like purity cube or anything like that, the purity cubes, they have HP to it. I don't know if they have a time limit, but I know they have HP to it. But I do make it back to the village that I was at before the Horde Night. I decided to take the Silk Touch mainly because if I have Silk Touch on my Gobber pickaxe, I can pick up the Gobber ore and I can put that in the furnace and it'll give me a whole glob instead of giving me just the globlets. So I pick up some flint, I make another fletching table and I do some trading. Day 13 in the morning, I continued doing my trades. I accidentally hit the villager. I really didn't mean to. I don't know how I did it, but I just fat fingered and left clicked him. Oh, no, that was an accident. All right. Thankfully, he only wanted one more stick instead of like another stack or something. I did see one of the infected monsters inside of the village. So glad he didn't spread infection. Give me this. Okay. So I made an anvil and put the silk touch onto my gobber pickaxe, and then I got out of there. I definitely didn't want to be around there knowing that the infection was heavily close by and the mobs was already making it to there. I just want to be able to get as much of the glob as I possibly can get at the moment. But hey, a special man has spawned out of nowhere. That's not good now, is it? I continue just going pretty much further away from the coordinates where he is. I would fight him no problem at all. I got all the tools that I need, except I don't. I don't have any purity potions. And I'm not risking what he can do because I don't know what he can do. So I continue traveling and I find another village. There was nothing inside of this village. There was really nothing at all. So I left the village pretty quickly. I don't like traveling through trees. I've said it before inside of my other two runs, but I really do not like trees because who knows what could be lurking in the shadows of the trees. So I pretty much just go around the outside of the trees and I do get some more sugar cane to turn that sugar cane into paper. I did travel a pretty far away and it was starting to get dark. For the next day, I saw this like, I don't know if you would call it a crater or a hole. Usually I see those kinds of places and I'm like, okay, this looks like a place that I can mine in. So I decided to go here and try to mine for some gobber. I was greeted by quite a bit of mobs. Luckily they weren't infected mobs, they were just regular. Eventually these mobs do go extinct. I do not know why, maybe because of the infection, I don't know but I just eventually never see these people. Only ever see infected, just infected. Anyway, I set down my furnace and I put my gobber ore inside of the furnace. There was not really much places to mine, so I only mined the ores that I saw underwater. After mining, I got a total of 30 gobber ingots and then I went to bed. The next morning, I got out of the place that I was at. I felt like I was really close to being done and I just needed a little bit more books. I set down my anvil and I repaired my armor. After repairing my armor, I wanted to make my little enchanting library. I still had some leather and I wanted wanted to make that leather into books. So I made me yet another cutting board and I was trying to get tree bark. There's a special gobber axe that tries to take down the whole tree, like the dynamic trees mod, but I accidentally made a regular gobber axe and that does not try to take down the whole tree. So I pretty much wasted a total of five ingots. It wasn't trying to take down the trees, so I checked what axe it actually was and it was the gobber tree axe. And this one requires an entire block of gobber. So more gobber that I have to spend here. Great, amazing.
laugh. That was still worth it, I guess. This saves a lot of time. I wanted to see if I could refund or recycle my other axe inside of the furnace. I can't. So I just spend the rest of day 16 trying to get tree bark. It started thunderstorming, so I went to bed. For day 17, I just continue off where I left and just get tree bark. I then make some bookshelves. I only had 11 bookshelves, which I don't think it's too bad. I don't I don't know what's good and I don't know what's bad for enchanting. Like I, I don't I don't really do this. Before enchanting, I only have five diamonds, meaning I can only get a total of 30 gobber ingots because you can't make the gobber unless you have diamond. I also need iron really badly too. So before I continue my little enchantment stuff, I want to go mining. So now I want to search for a place that I can mine. I did stumble upon the leopard. Nice little leopard. See, leopards are not harmful. While searching for places to mine, I went into this little, it was like the, it was the inside of a mountain and I found an emerald ore. Picking this up with silk touch and putting this stuff inside of a furnace honestly feels illegal. I feel like it's an absolute sin to do this and anybody who does do this should be locked up immediately. I couldn't find any place to mine. So I just went to bed. It was getting dark. So day 18, I managed to mine a little bit of iron. I only found a singular, okay, one one gobber ingot or one gobber ore i should say i only managed to get one gobber ore i got some gold too picking up gold and iron with silk touch doesn't really feel that illegal mainly because in older minecraft that's basically what you did anyway while i was trying to smelt things i was greeted by a zombie <laughs> I did want to stay up this whole day, mainly because I'm closing in on another horde night. And considering how low my resources are, I don't want to rush into it. No, no, I do not. I was going to do this until I was jump scared by an Enderman that was really close by me. And then yet another brain had spawned right after he spawned. Shit, that's close by. And I can't see anything. Out of time. All right, I need daylight. I can't see. I wanted to get out of this area as fast as I possibly can because a brain spawned by me. So day 19, I pack up my things. I make me a new shield and I start traveling, but I see the Enderman HP bar above me. Now I'm not exactly going to purposely try to fight this guy, but if he teleports on me, I will. I'm not going to run away if he teleports on me. I'll fight back. This land is going to start being infected so I go so I log off for the day when I log back on I see that I'm in the middle of a raid I literally just logged on and I think raids only happen at villages yet I was inside of a raid somehow some way the blue mold was moving quicker and quicker I thought I needed this block in order to make like purity blocks or something like that out on the wards i don't know i didn't i didn't need a single one of these things this stuff was moving fast and i wanted to get out of there so i just left because i was like if the enderman gets on me i'm just 100 percent dead there's no possible way i'm gonna survive if i get chain infected it, it's just over for the morning of day 20 i find out that i need crying obsidian which that's when i realized how many nether portals i passed and didn't pick up the crying obsidian which made me a little bit angry and for the purity cubes, for me to get the stuff that I need, I have to stay inside of infected ground. And for me to do that, well, I don't want to stay inside of infected ground because a horde night is about to happen. No idea if this would work on an Enderman. I'm going to tell you right now, I did not use this a single time. I did not hit any mobs with it once. It just sat inside of my inventory for a really long time, okay? It was never used. I tried to look for a place to mine and the place that I did go to didn't really have anything. It was mid, it was boring. So I just quickly got out of there. I, I traveled around for quite a while, like a long while. I eventually do find a village and I accidentally set myself on fire. Oh, why did I do that? What do you, what do 
you want? Why are you just in my face? So back another lectern. I want to be able to once again try to, I tried to do this so many times through this run. I want to get sharpness and life steal or sharp sharpness or life steal, not both one or the other i traded with this guy like all day he gave me sharpness three and i was like okay well i can i can just take sharpness three i can get two books and then i can make that into sharpness four no problem easy right yeah not so easy because i try to do trading i pick up wheat i trade the wheat get some emerald yeah easy right yeah cool whatever i pick up the little stone cutter i tried to make a villager a mason but he just completely ignored me he just stared at me was like no what? Come on, get Fletcher. Why? Are you, that's not even a Fletcher. Mason, be a Mason. Huh? Man was just wasting my time as a hobby. I was running out of time though because tonight was gonna be a night of the horde, and I didn't want the village to get infected, so I wanted to come back. The game didn't allow that though. Not stopping. So many of them. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, thank you. to go man come on get out of here Eagles are trying to take it. They just took one. Okay, yeah, I really gotta get out of here. Thank God he killed it. This is why I need gold. Not, not even golden apples. Just need purification. Prevent this from happening. Oh my God. Oh, 
other one, man. Back to kick us one baffles me, man. Oh, furnace is pretty much gone. Furnace is pretty much gone. There's literally nothing I can do about it. Thank God this time it did not spawn a phantom. Well, I had a golden apple the whole time. I was absolutely going through it. The phantoms can swim no problem. They could just fly through, like actually cut through the water like a knife. So before that whole ordeal, I was feeling confident that I can take on anything. Like if an enderman were to actually spawn on me, I can take them on no problem. But that was kind of a big reality check for me, like a massive reality check for me. It was just like a, a big slap to the face, you know? I also didn't want to stock up on the gobber food that much, like the, the lucky blocks. I didn't want to stock up on the gobber food too much because I, I was thinking of it as like kind of sort of overpowered. Like it's just easy cooked steaks. That's that's literally all they are, really. They're just all cooked steaks. Yeah, I'm just going to take what I can get. OK, but I just go around mining inside of this little cave that I had found. I do end up with like nine globs, which is really, really good. On day 23, I was greeted by my main man. Oh, you got to stop doing that. <laughs> you have to. That scared me. After talking with Goblin, I found the, oh. the amethyst that I need oh. in order to make the purity potions. Really good. This makes the run like so much easier. Being able to actually not get chain infected a million times. It's like it doesn't it doesn't completely throw away the whole dying thing, but it makes it to where I won't die from the infection if I have this on me. I obviously have to keep up with it and I can't make my inventory full of potions because you can only hold 16 potions at a time or one stack of potions is 16. An extension of the brain did spawn where I was mining. That's they spawned right by me. So I wanted to get out of there as quickly as I possibly could, because if I stay where the brain is, it detects me, it wants to kill me. So I was gonna start spreading the blue mold everywhere, but it was nightfall, so I went to sleep first. When I woke up, I started digging up and dig my way out of the cave that I was in. When I got out, I saw infected land around me. I was really glad that I did get out of there as quickly as I could, because if I didn't, it would be really, really bad for me. So before leaving, I quickly pick up some sand. That way I can make the potions. I traveled away from the blue mold. And while traveling, I found yet another village. And I was really, really hoping that this village can give me sharpness. So when I got inside the village, I set down my stuff. I set down the crafting table and the furnace. And I started smelting my gold. I then put a lectern in one of the huts so a villager can go inside of the hut and I can kidnap him. I didn't want to spend too much time trying to get enchantment from the villager yet. I wanted to make the potions potions first. I really just spent the rest of this day making purity potions. That was really it. For day 25, I kidnapped the villager. I made an axe. That way I can break the lectern quicker. If I were to use the tree axe, it's going to break all the little wood around it. Now, trying to trade with this villager, I got nothing. I don't know what, like my luck with trading? Insanity. Like actually insane. I don't know what I did these people, but this is the worst streak I've ever had when it came to trading. Eventually, he just made me so angry to the point where I just took him out. I made some more purity potions, so I had a whole stack of purity potions now. And then I made me some more gobber ingots. For day 26, I pretty much did the same thing. I just wasted the entire day with the villager. It truly amazes me of how bad of a streak that I can go on. And what's crazy is I got mending before I got sharpness or lifesteal. What is your problem? Mending? So once again, made me super angry. He started ignoring me and I, I just took him out. On day 27, I spent a little bit trading, but this guy just gave me protection for, and to be honest, I was really defeated at that point. I'll just, I'll just take the protection. I'll, I'll take it, man. I don't, I don't care at this point. I was kind of angry at first, but later I learned that this protection was like probably one of the most goaded things possible. I need four of these books and he wants 21 emeralds 
per book, which isn't too bad of a deal. 21 emeralds for protection four is it's perfectly fine. So I get my first protection book and I put it onto my chest piece. And then I repaired my chest piece too. Which thinking about it now, I really wish I just made a whole new set of armor and then put that protection on there. Cause I'm gonna regret this later. But I just continue trying to get as much wood as I possibly can and trade with the villager. Eventually he ran out of emeralds for sticks. So I was like, okay. And it was getting dark. So day 28, he was far away from his fletching table. I bring his fletching table to him and he just ignores it. Does not restock emeralds. I thought that maybe if I level him up, maybe he'll restock on emeralds, but he still didn't do that. So I trade with the, the librarian. I get another protection book and I put it onto my pants. After that, I pick up the fletching table and put it back to where it originally was. And the Fletcher walks to it. Now here's the problem. Jesus Christ. 53? Why? For what? Literally for what? I don't know why you would try to do such a thing. I will not tolerate such disrespect. So I fired a farmer and I made him a Fletcher. I traded with him, got some more protection books and I put it onto my boots. I only needed one more now, but the Fletcher that I was trading with wouldn't restock on emeralds. I got things to do and you're wasting my time, man. Another one that is sadly now useless to me. For day 29, I get yet another Fletcher and I trade with him. And just in case my armor ever breaks, I wanted to get more emerald too. So I got the last protection book that I needed and I applied it to my headpiece. And then I did a little bit more trading to get some emeralds. That way, you know, armor breaks, I can get a new set, no problem. It won't have protection four and I'll take a lot more damage, but it's worth it. I end up leaving the village. I find this small place to mine and got some gobber food. That was really about it. It was just gobber food. I left that place, traveled for a good while and found yet another village. Another village. Wait, is this the village that I was at before? If it is, this is really good for me. Please let this be the village I was at before. Definitely not a village I was at before. I thought this was the village that I was at that gave me sharpness three. I was really excited for it because, oh uh, yeah, finally I can get my sharpness. Yeah, no, that was not the case. I traded with this villager and he gave me mending. Since a horde night was coming tomorrow, I didn't want to sleep and waste his day. So I spent this entire day trying to trade with this guy just to get sharpness. He was not giving it to me. <laughs> This one's kind of fat. Mm. What should I name you? I'm gonna name you Kelp. Hey, he likes it. His name is Kelp. Nice. See that? Main man Kelp. He's beautiful, isn't he? You know what Kelp wants you to do? Click like and sub. Especially if you made it this far. He he would love it. But I tried to trade some more and I, I didn't get anything. Literally nothing. Absolutely nothing. I gave up on trading for a while. I tried to enchant some books. Maybe I can get something from there. But I didn't get anything. So I just picked up my stuff and left. I pretty much just traveled until it got dark. Waiting for the whole night to happen. Every time, every time. The node actually did spawn up here for me to make the purifier thing. I kinda need it. I hear it. Darkness too for a minute. Oh. I don't know 
how high I am. What is that? What is that? Come on, give me sight. Give me vision. I can't see. Oh, Lord. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you giving me light. They can pretty much take away my purity. I thought it just stayed. Those are alligators. No, thank you. The infection's starting over here, so I, I don't think I really have a choice. Sorry, village, but you're gonna have to go. <laughs> I'm trying to hold them off, but I can't. Try to go there, but not happening. I guess getting infected runs down my purity time. Makes sense. <laughs> I'm not even gonna complain about it. Oh boy. That's right by me. Alright. Listen. Oh. Whoa! That's not good. Where did he? I'm not even gonna question it. I'm just gonna take the chance. <laughs> I will take that chance. I need to find crying obsidian. That's like the number one thing that I need to find right now. I can wait for another brain to spawn. Another brain will spawn. But I really need apples too. So I ended up making it through that night. I got extremely jump scared by that Enderman. That that Enderman scared the shit out of me. I am not gonna lie. I I was shivering in my timbers. Now the other problem here is I don't have any apples. I need apples. Inside of this mod with the old biomes you'll go, there's apple trees. But every single time I find apple trees, they're inside of infected land, which kills the trees, and it's infected land. I also just needed more gold too, and mining in the area that I was in was not gonna happen because inf just so much infected land by the blue mold. I did find a broken nether portal though, but this broken nether portal was crazy to me. There's no crying obsidian. What is all of this? I'm actually mad. There's no crying obsidian. This is like a full nether portal. It's actually just a perfect nether portal. Just one obsidian off. What? Jesus Christ, that scared me. Oh, 
Now, I don't know if this is like bugged or what, but I've never found spawners in general. That's just like basically surface level. The chest had sweeping edge and I applied it to my halberd. It was getting dark and I went to bed. Day 33. In the morning, I got caught on some blueberries. And I also saw a village out in the distance. Before entering that village, I had a little battle with an alligator. Now inside of this village, I tried to do some more trading. I did get something useful. I got something called first strike, which makes the first hit deal 25% more damage on the first hit. Really neat. I applied it to my hellbird. I then looked for a place to mine. I saw this little ditch, didn't have anything besides some gobber food and that was about it. I got out of there, went back to the village and before I was gonna go to sleep, I actually took out the librarian because I got the enchantment that I wanted. On day 34, I find this little ravine and I wanted to mine inside of there, but the blue mold doesn't allow me to do things. So wonderful. Now I have to get out the place that I was going to mine and the place actually looked pretty cool. Probably would have found quite a bit of stuff, would have gotten quite a bit of gold or something. I tried to look around the blue mold to see if I can get any beehives. No, that, that wasn't happening. While trying to get out of this land, I discovered something, which is you can't pick, at least I don't think you can. I don't think you can pick up like infected dirt or anything like that, unless you have a diamond level tool, which I honestly don't like. I haven't tested it with iron, but I think you need diamond. The brain that spawned was barely there and there was so much infected land already, like a lot, a mega ton. So I really, really wanted to get out of there because Enderman also likes to be there. It's like they sense it. For day 35, I find this low place to mine. Got some gobber food and I also found a mine shaft. The mine shaft had all kinds of gold and diamonds. I searched around this mine shaft for a while before I found the chest. And when I did find the chest, it didn't really have anything besides some iron and an enchantment of infinity, which is pretty much useless to me. So I just continued walking around the mine shaft trying to get some gold and diamonds and I, I got like a lot of diamonds and gold, just so much. While mining, I was greeted yet again by my man. Can never go wrong with Goblin Trader. I, I threw out my enchantment table because I felt like I wasn't going to need it anymore. Like I'm not getting any good enchantment, so there's no point in having it. So I throw it out for space. After doing a last trade with Goblin, I ended up going to sleep. For day 36, I explored the mines a bit and then I made me some golden apples. I also made me some more purity potions because I really needed it. I only had one left, so I made me a stack. I then put me some gobber ore inside of the furnace and I just let that smell. After I was done, smelting i decided to get out of that cave which i'm really really glad i did because the infection was catching up to me don't want that no no just no no i do not it would have been really really bad if i was surrounded by this blue land after traveling for a decent amount of time i tried to repair my armor i repaired my helmet and my chest piece those were the only two pieces that I can repair. I couldn't repair my pants or my shoes because I didn't have enough cost. One thing about being inside of infected land or fighting horde knights is getting the EXP that I need. So after a bit, I found this like ditch next to a village. It went pretty deep. I wanted to go into there, but the sun was setting. So I just set down my furnace and smelted iron until it was time for me to go to sleep. The next morning before going into there, I wanted to check out the village and see what was inside of there. The village was actually the village that I found kelp in. You know, that, that cool turtle that I told you to sub? Yeah, that guy. It was that village. So I just left the village immediately, grabbed my iron. 
and then I just went into the mines. I really just spent my whole time just vibing and grabbing as much gold as I can possibly get. These are the only times that I can really relax until I'm woken up by the reality of me being chased by blue mold. Did find a little bit of diamonds and then I was greeted yet again by my main man. I never actually seen him this many times. I don't know why he was showing up as much as he was, but I guess I guess the blue mold put him on an absolute grind set and I respect it. This day was pretty much just spent gathering resources and repairing things. For day 38, when I got out of the mines, it was actually raining. I made some more golden apples. This day was boring. I traveled for a bit and I found yet another village. I was finding villages left right and center this village didn't have anything it had a compass which the compass can be used to find the fortress with the blue mold brain inside the main brain inside of it but if you know it just sits at zero 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 there's no point in having this because you could just look at coordinates but this day overall was pretty boring there wasn't much going on i did a little bit of mining i didn't really go deep though so i got another place to mine got some gobber food and that was it day 39 I had a nice, nice gift when I woke up. Yet another brain has spawned. I made some shares because I wanted to get the resin from the little beehives. The beehives makes resin. I found that out by Googling it. I also discovered that if you're close to any of the brains, you get darkness too for a solid minute and the darkness lasts forever. If you're near the brain, once you get away from the brain, then the countdown will actually start to go down. But the Enderman also sensed that I was near it and teleported there. These mobs was being really annoying. I, I just wanted some resin, but they would not hand it over. After a while, I managed to get one resin. This was the only resin that I spotted and got for a really long time, like longer than I would really like to admit. But while trying to kill these mobs and defend myself, he showed up. That's only one of many that I will be handling. After my whole battle, I repaired my boots. I smelted some gold and then I went to bed. So for day 40, I wanted to go back near the brain because it spawns this thing called living rock. And it also has some kind of special ore that you can use to make a sword with, but you also need to kill the Nenderman and get its little hand or whatever. But the living rock, I wanted it because if you combine it with the purity shards, you can get this like ward block, which basically wards off the blue mold. Now this was going a lot better inside of my head. So let's say if you were to make a square with the purity blocks, it'll only ward off the mold from one block near it, meaning the big hole in the square, it can still get infected. In conclusion, spoiler alert, I don't use this at all, but I wanted to find some more beehives that way I could make some more purity cubes. Let me tell you, sneaking 
does not work. It, it never works. Sneaking just does not work. It still alerts the mobs and it makes them spawn. Yada, yada, yada. It, it legit does not work. I don't know why it's an option. I don't know why there's an achievement called Sneak 100. It doesn't do anything. It, it, it's literally useless. But I pretty much just try to get out of that area. A Horde Knight is approaching. There's only one day left before a Horde Knight. So I want to get out of the blue land. Do not fight in their territory. I, I don't want to do that. I'm pretty much only missing... The crying obsidian and three resin to be able to make this purity cube so for day 41 i wanted to get the calcite from the calcite ore you can't pick this up with anything besides diamond i forgot to mention that but you can't pick up the living rock or this ore without diamond you need a diamond or higher level pickaxe and you can't smelt this either you have to break it normally so i i turned the regular ore into calcite and then i made my purity blocks which again mind you i never once used them like actually utilized them i wasn't going to utilize them for a base or whatever but no point if my entire base is still going to get infected before the horde night i pretty much just prepped i smelted gold and i made some more purity potions and after this horde night i would really really like to get crying obsidian heard i managed to survive that night easy no problem not even close protection four really putting in work and no i do not keep protection four forever <laughs> so i wanted to see if it's going to be cheaper if i were to use just you know another piece the same piece but it's actually not for the next morning i wanted to see if there was any beehives around there wasn't any beehives there was none at all and i really don't know how long it actually takes for the beehives to even give resin like i don't know if i'm supposed to wait it like two days or anything like that i don't know if it's supposed to be quick i don't know if it's quicker if it's by a brain or anything yeah i did see a village nearby the village didn't have anything so i just left that village and when i did leave the village i got attacked by a bear <laughs> really close to me 
I didn't want to fight the Enderman because even though I do have really, really good protection right now, my armor would probably break and it wouldn't be worth it if I were to fight him and then my armor just breaks. For day 43, I legit only traveled looking for crying obsidian. I did not find anything at all. There goes day 43. For day 44, it was the same thing, just looking for a broken nether portal, but I traveled across blue land. Luckily, there was no problem. Like I wasn't hardcore chased or anything like that. It wasn't like super, super infected land. I climbed the top of this mountain and looked around because I was tired of just running around like a headless chicken trying to find this broken nether portal. Eventually, I finally spotted one. Oh, oh finally. It took so long, but I found one. What? diamonds can spawn inside of these so i don't know if this is a part of just mods or if this is actually normal but rare a broken nether portal chest gave me a diamond weapon but the other thing that it gave me was the life steal the first time i actually see life steal and it was life steal three i wanted to see how it works i think it only works if you don't have 100 percent hp i pick up the crying obsidian and then i just continue traveling the only thing that i have to do now is infect the crying obsidian i did find yet another village and this village had like some some kind of mushroom guy, spore guy. Now, if I was still doing the spore infection, this would creep me out a lot because this dude is basically playing with fire. The shrooms didn't do anything. The spores that it dropped didn't do anything. It was whatever. I just picked up the bookshelves that was inside of there and tried to make a lectern. That way I can do some more trading, you know? Ooh, try to get this sharpness for the 20 millionth time. It's like I don't learn my lesson. The villager that I put the lectern in front of, he just completely ignored it. He jumped over it. Disrespectful. He goes inside of the little mushroom hut and becomes, I don't even know what they're called. But I took away the thing, fired him, and I made him a librarian. He didn't give me anything, and I didn't trade for long either. For some odd reason, it glitched when I broke the lectern. It dropped two instead of just one. I don't, I don't know. I was about to go to bed, but I realized I didn't have a bed, and I honestly do not remember where I put my bed. It's just gone. So I just stole one of the beds from the village. The next morning, for some odd reason, the librarian was still a librarian, even though I took away the lectern. Apples. Last bottle. So I started trading with another villager and this villager was actually cool because he gave me devastation too. And each level of devastation gives you a 10% chance to crit, which do 150% of your damage. So if you have devastation too, that's a 20% chance to crit. Now you may think that, ah, that sounds pretty broken. Yeah, it sounds broken, but it's actually not because it doesn't allow me to one shot everything that I touch. I thought that was the case, but it's not. So I make my fletching table and I do all the trades that I need to do. I trade it until night and then the next morning I break a bookshelf and then I trade with the librarian. Now I try to put it on my hellbird, but I couldn't do it. I guess it's because I had first strike on there. So I try to put it on my scythe and I can actually put it on my scythe. So I wanted to make it devastation three. That way I can have a 30% chance to crit. So I do some more trades and then I go back to the librarian. I get another devastation book and I add it to my site and then I have devastation three. I wanted to make some more purity potions because one stack clearly is not enough for a horde night. So for the rest of the day of day 47, I just made some purity potions. So for day 48, I wanted to look for another broken nether portal so that way I can get some more crying obsidian. I found absolutely nothing. Thing. The path that I was going had a body of water, so I made me a boat, but by the time I started sailing, the sun was setting. For day 49, I continued my travels. I saw this beautiful, beautiful structure. I don't know what this kind of stuff is called, but I really, really enjoy the way that it looks. It looks extremely cool. Very nice, very neat. But I eventually make it to new land. Right by where I arrived, there was another village. I actually don't know what it is, like how I managed to find these villages so easily when I don't really need them, but I'm not going to complain. Inside of this village, there was a librarian. After trying to trade with this guy for the entire day, he finally gave me what I wanted. Sharpness 5. After damn near 50 days, I finally get sharpness five. So the next morning I try to get some flint and make a fletching table. I pretty much spent this entire day going back and forth, getting wood, making it into sticks, 
trading, yada, yada, yada. Get my sharpness book. I put sharpness five on my site. I was prepared to leave the village, but I realized that I don't have a bed on me. So I went back to the village and picked up my bed and then left again. So day 51, I land on some new land. Since it's a horde night, I need to get to a place where it isn't really cluttered. I did find this broken ship. There's some weapons with one of the mods that you cannot craft at all. You can only find by exploring and looking inside of chests. This ship didn't have anything inside of its chest besides some lapis and iron nuggets. That was really about it. While traveling, I almost jumped into a pool of lava. My mic wasn't on at the time, but I, I let out a small scream. Don't worry about how the scream sounded, okay? Yeah, it's not important, but I, I let out a small scream. Now, I enjoy the place that I'm at for the horror night, but so the night begins. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I don't, I don't think my armor is going to last. I hate, I hate this field. I don't know what this is called, but I can't see more than I already can see. The thing that I am most afraid of right now is my armor breaking. And this field is just never ending. Another horde. Please get me out this field. Why is it just still going? Finally. Very, very hectic, you know? I I didn't think I would survive after falling into that hole, I'm not gonna lie. But I tried to repair my armor after killing the things that was chasing me. I only managed to repair my chest piece because things are getting super expensive. I wanted to go back and pick up my obsidian that I had dropped inside of that hole. I also didn't want to stay in this area for too long because I was running out of purity potions. So I wanted to get everything that I needed as quickly as I possibly could. Infected. You uh, I need that. Can I pick it up? There we go. Holy I'm pretty sure an Enderman's gonna be here pretty soon.
There was just so, so much infected land. And if an enderman were to spawn on me, I would 100% die. I only had very, very little period of potions left. So my job was to just get out of this area as quickly as I possibly can. My armor was also just in shambles too. I really don't want my boots to die. I have one potion. Sorry, but that's not happening. Yeah, no, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna bounce. I tried to find beehives before that happened, but it appeared that I couldn't do that. So while traveling, I'm gonna be killing every single animal that I see in order to get the XP that I need. And after seeing how much I've been repairing my armor lately, it made me realize not having mending makes things like way more difficult. I'm not as relaxed or lenient now. It just makes me a little bit more fearful. But I turned my I turned my crying obsidian into crying souls. And I tried to see how much it was gonna cost to repair my helmet. 33 for the helmet? I think I'm just gonna have to make a whole new set. This is crazy. I don't have much time, but I have to find another village. I wasn't that happy about having protection four, but to be honest, this protection four has saved me. I don't know how many times. For pretty much the majority of day 53, I was just looking for this one village and I could not find anything. I didn't find anything at all. Day 54 though, I finally ended up finding a village. Is it a village? It is. I go inside the village. I loot the chest. There was some apples, a book, an emerald. I took out the horses there. That way I can get some leather. I thought I needed leather. I don't, I did not need leather at all. I'm sorry, cow. That's not even a cow. But I travel across the water again so I can get some sugar cane. That way I'm able to make paper. I then make it back to the village and it was dark and I went to bed. The next morning for day 55, I make a lectern so I can start my trades. Now, I'm gonna just tell you right now, okay? Yeah, okay? 55 and 56, nothing, nothing. Absolutely garbage the whole time, trash. It seems like I got too lucky with the sharpness five because they just was not giving me anything at all. And that lifesteal, I don't even think lifesteal is gonna ever happen to me. I end up trying to get this villager to give me protection for for pretty much the whole night or damn near the whole night and he wasn't giving me anything so I just took him out. I gave up on trading and then I just left the village for day 57. While traveling, I was just taking out as much animals as I can possibly take out. I did repair my boots and then my anvil broke. So I made me another anvil. I started to just use this day as a restock day. I made me some more gobber ingots. I made some more purity shards. I turned the crying souls that I had into pure souls. Nothing but restocking on resources that I need. In the morning of day 58, I made the last thing of purity potions that I wanted to make and left out of there. So I feel somewhat prepared to go towards zero, zero, zero. That's why I wanted to restock on whatever it is that I needed to restock on. While traveling, I found another broken nether portal. It didn't really huh. have much. It had crying obsidian and a gold block. They only had a golden apple inside of the chest. Everything else was useless. I found this weird rendered village. This village was actually mind boggling to me because inside of the blacksmith shop, there was something crazy. What? Three diamonds? They have diamonds inside of it? That many? Jesus Christ. You know what? Props to you, man. I appreciate it. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know if that's super rare or what. That's my first time ever seeing a village with diamonds inside of it, though. I, I honestly have no idea. But it was starting to get dark. So day 59, continuing my travels to 000. I needed to cross water. I didn't think that the jungle was that big, but I was wrong. So I wanted to make a boat and then just travel the water. But I had beef with a certain somebody. What am I stuck on? Who was that? What was I stuck on? Oh, I was feared by the tiger. I want to kill it. I know you want to. I know you want to get in the water. Come on, do it. Do it. Get in the water. I dare you to. I, I absolutely dare you to. That's what I thought. He ain't gonna, oh, he's doing it. Oh, my God. Are you dumb? You're so lucky. 
Now you want to be smart. Oh, never mind. You don't want to be smart. Are you gonna? Oh, you gonna do it? You gonna do it? Come on, get. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I know you want to. Do it again. One more time. I hate tigers. Tigers is one of the main reasons why I hate the jungle. I truly despise the tigers in this game. But I make my boat and I continue traveling the water. I make it back to land and I make a new shield because my shield was dying. As I was going on, I went back to that land of the little wheat field where the infection lays near. Oh, okay. All right, all right, okay, 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 I, I, okay, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, man. Stop. What the? Day 60, I ran into a small horde of the infected, which I honestly didn't mind, mainly because dealing with this horde gives me XP, and I needed XP in order to repair parts of my armor. Where did you come from? After repairing my pants, I can no longer repair anything of my armor. Everything costs like 33 to 35 EXP or levels in order to repair now. So if my armor breaks, I just have to replace it. Oh boy, three of them? Apple trees. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> Yikes. Just when I was happy about some apple trees. That's crazy. There's bees though. The sun is about to set. But the longer I wait, the worse this can get. But if I were to get hoarded down by the infected, then it's gonna take even longer. In the morning, I was greeted by some phantoms that followed me back to where I went to sleep. I'm glad y'all came in the morning instead of doing it at night, but I really don't want to use my resources on y'all. The phantoms weren't really any trouble at all, and I handled them pretty quickly. After handling them, I had to go through this big blue field. All right, I think as long as there's no brain nearby, I should be okay. me you're not stopping me I managed to make it out safely 
The path towards zero, zero, zero going smooth. Nice, nice and smooth. It's a little bit bumpy, but smooth enough, huh? But some people don't like it when it's going too smooth. Come on, you want to fight? Come on. You want to fight that badly? Holy shit. That hurts. Okay. No, thank you. Holy. Never try to fight an Enderman on blue land. Tonight is gonna be a horror night, so I wanna get from these. I don't even know what this place is called, but I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I truly despise it. It looks cool at first, but actually trying to run through it is super, super annoying. It lasts quite a while. I'm, I'm tired of this, like, please. Just let me travel normally. Great. I'm still struggling. I don't even think I'm gonna see the horde because I can't get out of here. Never mind. I lied. I need clear land. I can't see anything. All right, all right, all right. Let's, uh, let's calm down. What? Holy. They are moving. Yeah, I don't know if tonight's going to be safe for me. Okay. All right. They are actually zooming right now. And I don't have any food in my inventory. Remove the jungle. No one likes the jungle anyway. Come on, really. Who, who enjoys jungle biomes? No one enjoys that. I think the only thing it's good for is trying to get a parrot. Very nice. Only, what was that? Two, I've only had two smooth horde nights. There is no more after that. This was the last smooth horde night that I had. The first one was the first horde night and then this one, mainly because I was just able to outrun it due to the water because they can't swim fast. But while continuing my journey to zero, 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 I ran through a lot of blue land, but I wasn't really touched by anything. Like I had a phantom here and there, sure, but that was about it. I went back into this like mountain, kind of biome thing I truly despise. I saw a temple. It didn't have anything else useful besides just gold. Because of the horde night that I had though, I wanted to make some more potions. So I decided to make a quick stop and make some potions and then continue my travels. For day 63, I ran into a bear.
I saw that I needed a new shield. So I stopped for a sec and I made me some gold apples and then made me a shield. I'm not really doing much these days besides just trying to get to one destination. I made a boat so I can travel across water, but it was getting dark. So I traveled across it the morning of day 64. When I hit the land, I was greeted by some pillagers. Listen, man, I really wouldn't be doing this if I, if I get hit, I will kill you. Don't touch me. Don't do it. Don't do it. I saw some infected land and I saw a phantom corpse. A phantom corpse spews out the little mold stuff like the spewer does. So I wanted to put my crying obsidian next to it. That way it can turn into infected crying obsidian. But when I try to pick up the crying obsidian, I was just getting rushed down by all these infected. I accidentally purified the crying obsidian and I think the purity lasts on objects too. I was just standing in the distance watching my crying obsidian and it just was not getting infected. The next morning of day 65, I picked up the crying obsidian and I left. I did see this area that looked cool for mining. I didn't do a lot of mining. I just went there to get gobber food and that was it. After getting the gobber food, I left. As I was getting closer to my destination, I just randomly got ambushed by the infected oh my lord where did they where did these people come from the closer i get to zero 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 the more infected land that i'm obviously gonna have to go through but the morning of 66 was weird for me What the? Okay. How did he even get there? Very weird guy. He's just chilling in the sky. I ended up running through a village. I looted it. It had some apples inside of there. That was really about it. I finally got the raid thing off of me. I just left it to this village. It's not my problem. So I just left them with that. Before the day ended, I wanted to make me another stack of potions just to be safe inside of where I'm going. So for the last of the daylight that I had, I just made me some purity potions. Okay, look, there's just a lot of traveling, okay? For day 67, I eventually found a village the only thing that i really took from this village was the torches because i was too lazy to find coal I, I really didn't feel like finding coal with how much of a struggle it is for me to get so i just stole all the torches and then i went to bed for day 68 i finally made it to where zero 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 is i didn't want to go on top of it so i instead started mining from some other area and going towards it that way, I'm not on top of the infected land. There's no Enderman on me or a bunch of infected on me. I really should have just stayed up, but instead I went to sleep. But the next day, I just started mining towards it. I ended up falling into a mine shaft. I did get like two diamonds and some gold. That was really it. I am pretty much right next door to where the fortress is. I wanted to make a helmet because my helmet is basically on one HP. So just in case that breaks on my way there, I made a new helmet. I can't take the easy way to the fortress because there's a shit ton of blue mold and enemies that's pretty much just guarding that area. So instead of me dealing with this annoying enemies, I just decided to take another route. I'm gonna take a left and I'm just gonna mine through the wall. Holy. There it goes.
eventually I make it to the fortress, but I can't really enter the fortress because I don't want a horde night to happen. The horde night is two days away, but if a horde night happens in this area, it's gonna make it like 40 times harder to actually explore this fortress. Every single time I try to move even remotely, I just kept getting bombarded by the infected. So I couldn't even make it to the fortress. So instead I decided I'll just come back to this when I officially can. I will definitely do it before day 100. So I left out of there and I started digging up. By the time I made it to the surface, I saw that it was the next day. So it is now day 70. While traveling, I did see an infected village. I tried to get one of the beehives, but the big man had other plans. Gonna teleport to me. Come here, attack this guy. Why is he so fast? What are you doing? No idea where you went. This I took out the ender and I wanted to try to get some of the resin from the beehives. But again, I don't know how long it takes for beehives to actually produce any resin. I pretty much stayed around this area for like the whole day, hoping that the beehives will give me some resin. I only need three resin. That way I can get the purity cubes. So for the next day, I find yet another beehive and I want to get some resin from it, but there is no resin. And the sand, like the infected sand, I actually cannot mine this either, unless I have a diamond shovel, I'm assuming. I didn't try with the iron shovel, but my hand was not doing anything at all. No resin. Come on, B, I need it. Since today is a horde night, I want to get away from this area as far as I possibly can. That way, it doesn't make my life harder when I come back here. So I ended up traveling somewhere else. When I made it to land, I finally threw away that lava bucket that I've been holding onto for pretty much the whole run. I was supposed to smelt gold in the morning, but I completely forgot to do that. So I tried smelting as much as I possibly can in the time that I had, but I, I didn't manage to get much. Endermen will now start spawning within these horde nights too. Die. This phantom is just so annoying. Oh, wow. Great. This works. Alright, I can fight. I'll fight here. That's a jungle. Why did it have to be a jungle? Fuck you. Let's 
HP do you have? And force me to use this is why I hate the jungle! This is the worst spot to fight, man. through the jungle now. Jesus, I'm sweating right now. I'm so afraid for my armor. I'm glad that the Enderman has pushed me into the water. And I'm glad that I was in a big body of water. Because of that, I was able to escape. If I was on land and having to fight three Endermen at the same time, I would not win. My armor is in complete shambles too. So for day 72, I want to look for a village. That way I can probably get protection books. I did find a village, but it was one of those abandoned villages that had a bunch of zombies inside. The chest only had some emerald. That was really it. So useless village. I pretty much just continued traveling for day 72. On day 73, I found a broken nether portal. The chest had some gold nuggets inside of there, and there were some gold blocks around the broken nether portal too, with the crying obsidian. I picked up all that stuff and I just got out of there. I did eventually find yet another village. I was hoping to get a little bit of protection like immediately. That way I can go right back into battle because I wanted to handle those Endermen as fast as I possibly can. I didn't want the risk of me fighting like five Endermen at the same time and then just me dying. So I set up my stuff here, my furnace and all that stuff. I started smelting my gold. I got some sugar cane so I can get paper and make some books. That way I can make a bookshelf and then make a lectern. But it was starting to get dark, so I went to bed. For some, I don't know how they do it. Villagers and iron golems, you'd expect iron golems to be smarter. They're not. I don't know how this dude was just magically floating on one block, but here he was. I let that guy out and I started trading with villagers. And this happened quickly too. Oh. Oh, yes. Okay, I can go back into battle. I just need, I need, uh, um, fuck. What is it called? Fletching table. One of the villagers gave me protection three. I was really excited because I can go right back into battle like I was hoping I can do. So I got some flint. I made another fletching table and I made one of the villagers Perfect. a fletcher. I ran around looking for cows so I can get some leather. That way I can get the books for all of my armor. And there was barely any cows around. I was looking around for a while and I barely saw any cows at all. But it was starting to get dark so I slept. And then the next day I found some cows which I was excited. I was getting literally everything that I needed to get. But for some odd Six. reason, the game hates my guts. Look at this. Wait, what? Or who are you? What? What? Where did he go? Great. Wonderful. Just wonderful. Wonderful, man. Wonderful. I knew I should have. I knew I should have boxed him up. Something in my head was just yelling at me to put him inside of a box. 
this was probably one of the most miserable days for me possible. I was just thinking to myself, I should put them inside of a box because usually I kidnap villagers. That way they don't escape. I don't lose them. They don't possibly die or anything like that. And the one time I decide to let the villagers just roam free, he disappears on me. And there's no way that a mob had spawned or anything like that too because I didn't stay up long enough for a mob to even spawn. So how the hell did he just randomly disappear? Wonderful. I go inside of a hut where one of the villagers are sleeping. Replace the wooden floor with the purity blocks. That way, if I break the lectern, it doesn't break the wood floors either. In the morning, I find out he's the villager that I accidentally hit. Of course it's you. Of course it's the one I accidentally hit. My God, man. And then I somehow lost the villager. I seriously have to know how are you down here, man? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Stop. So for the entirety of day 76 and day 77, I pretty much just spent it trying to get protection and they would not give me protection. It got to the point where I was so angry, I just wiped out the entire village. I just killed every villager, except for the Fletcher because the Fletcher didn't do anything wrong. He was still doing his job. So the new goal was to look for a lava pool. That way I can get some obsidian and make a new enchantment table. So that was what I was gonna look for now. I was still killing every animal that I saw in order to get EXP levels, which was good because that way I can get the enchantments, like the highest enchantments without worrying about being too low of level. So I just spent the majority of day 78 looking for a lava pool. For day 79, I was still murdering every cow that I saw in my eyesight. It's not like I needed steak or anything like that. I was just killing them just for XP and possibly leather. While traveling, I did see this gigantic catfish. That's a big catfish. Thanks, huge. What the? There was people inside of my comment section telling me how big these things can get, and I actually didn't know. But I eventually did find the lava pool, and I started picking up obsidian from there. I did throw away my helmet because there was no point in having that helmet anymore. It was literally on the verge of death. Once I got all the obsidian and made my enchantment table, I thought I had pretty much everything that I needed until I remembered that I don't have any lapis at all. I don't have any lapis. Ah, I didn't even think about that. So for day 80, I'm looking for lapis. Usually lapis, you can see them inside of deep bodies of water really easily. You can just see the blue. The area I was in wasn't giving me anything. So I just traveled around for other spots. I did find another village because of my situation and there was going to be a horde night tomorrow. I really, really didn't want to sleep, but I ended up finding some lapis anyway. So my fear of, ah, oh, I'm not going to have anything before the horde night. Fear gone. Perfect. Lapis right there. So I quickly make me a door and get the lapis underwater. I try to see if there is anything else underwater, but there was nothing. They had some lucky gobber blocks, the, you know, the thing to drop food and fuel. They had some of that, but that was really about it. I was walking around at night and I found the village, but I discovered the village was just the village that I had literally just left. So I made some bookshelves and then I went to bed. Now on day 81, I wanted to make more bookshelves and I did remember that there was sugarcane and leather inside one of the chest that I had put it in inside of the village. So right after I put down my enchantment table and my bookshelves, I was just going to go right into the building where the chest was that had the sugar cane and leather inside of it. But I completely forgot about it the second I was done putting down my stuff. I don't know how I do it. I, I really don't. But I ran into the distance to pick up the sugar cane and kill some cows to get leather. I was getting a lot of sugar cane, like a lot of it. Then once I got back to the village, I went into the building and I picked up the sugar cane and leather that I had left there. I don't know why I didn't pick up the paper that was inside of there, but whatever.
So I started making my armor and when I was putting the armor inside of the enchantment table, they were giving me some pretty bad enchantments. I wasn't getting anything good. I wanted to make a pair of pants, but I didn't have any iron left. So I killed the iron golem to get iron from him and didn't make a pair of pants. After making the pants though, that's when I actually started getting good enchantments. I was getting all the protection that I needed. For the helmet on the last enchantment, I needed one level. And for that, I just went to the Fletcher. Thankfully, I did not kill the Fletcher. I just traded with him until he gave me the one level that I needed. I didn't throw away the armor that I was currently wearing because I didn't want to waste it. I wanted to wait till it broke. So I just kept it until it was time to throw it away. Phantoms are so annoying, man. They run through my purity. Oh, my lord. Wow. Wow. Okay, thankfully, only one Enderman spawned. I am so glad I'm around water. I'm really glad I made this new armor. Okay, teleport back. You know, that's fine. That doesn't bother me. Come on, stop being afraid. Fight me! Okay, he's fighting me. Oh my lord. After fending off the Enderman, I wanted to go back to the village that way I can pick up my stuff. But just look at how much blue land there is already. The bear, it was barely even there. How did you get in the tree? What? No. Once I made it back to the village, I killed the iron golem that was inside of the water. Mainly because, again, I need iron and I'm too lazy to get iron. But I picked up my shelves and my enchantment table. I then went back to one of the infected spots. That way I can try to infect my obsidian, my crying obsidian. Now, I really wish this went easy, but it didn't. This was annoying. It was a struggle. Just let me 
let me pick this up if you don't mind. Did it break it? It broke it. Wonderful. I am struggling right now. The next morning of day 83, I wanted to see if there was any beehives around, you know, beehives that can give me resin, the thing that I've been looking for for the past damn near 90 days. I only had two potions left, which isn't good. You already know how it is if I get infected and a chain reaction starts or a chain infection starts. It's just, it's not fun. It's very easy to die if you have that happen to you, no matter the armor you have on. So I only had very few chances to actually run through this land and try to find any kind of resin that I can find. Nothing, but I can't do anything. Off of me, man. Fuck off. This is just infection over and over and over again. It does not stop. So for day 84, I obviously want to make more purity potions. I would repair my armor, but I don't really have much 
that I can repair my armor with. I don't have any gold. So the next day I want to make gold. But for this day, I just want to make as much purity potions as I can. But after being done with making all of my purity potions, spending a good while doing that, I started traveling looking for a place where I can mine. I finally got rid of those little purity blocks after realizing I'm not going to use them. So I threw them away and I traded it for sugarcane. The next day I had to travel across water again. So I made me another boat. I ended up having to go through this. I really don't know what this place is called, but it's probably my second least favorite thing, like right behind jungles. I don't like this. I don't like going through it. Going around it, maybe. Going through it, no. And since I didn't have feather falling on my boots anymore, I had to be more lenient towards, you know, jumping off of certain heights. But this day was pretty much boring just looking for a place to mine. At the end of the day, I did see a broken portal. So in the morning of day 86, I did go into the water and check it out. There wasn't anything much inside of there the greatest thing they had was golden carrots i really do need to try to utilize golden carrots more if i can remember because i forget that golden carrots are even a thing while on my journey there i did discover something weird so when i fall i don't really take fall damage i don't know how high like i can go without taking fall damage and i don't really want to test it i thought it was the feather falling that was negating my fall damage in the first place but it appears that the armor has some kind of special power that i didn't know at all remember i don't look at anything on mods i just grab mods that i think are cool or look cool so I'm not exactly sure what the armor 100% do. There was times where I was tempted to jump off a full mountain, but I didn't want to do it in risk of actually taking that fall damage. But it's not like I'm going to die to fall damage anyway. I, like, I know I'm bad at the game, but I'm not that bad at the game, okay? So with the sugar cane that I had, I made it into paper and then made books. I wanted to make a bookshelf, but the bookshelf that I made was a different kind of texture. I went back to that little area and I got the iron there. Afterwards, I just went to sleep. In the morning, I got jump scared. Whoa. I almost obliterated you, man. <laughs> I was so close. Did you? Oh, now I picked it up. I was really close to killing you. I'm not gonna lie. So I was I was really close to pressing left click on him. And I just know if I pressed left click, he would have died. I, I'm gonna, I don't know what I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't, I don't, I really don't. So this, this section here, right? Okay, let me tell you, let me tell you. I could have had a pickaxe with efficiency four with possibly more. Instead, I just take efficiency two. Why? Why did I do that? For what reason did I do that? And it can't be because my levels are are too low because i'm level 37 I really so why did i decide to choose efficiency 2 over efficiency 4 it doesn't make any sense I, I don't know why i did that when i was done enchanting all i got was a protection 3 book that i never used i'm gonna be honest i've never used the book okay i decided to repair my armor too since i did get the gobber ingots For day 88 in the morning, I ran into a certain guy. I will kill you. I will. Look at this. Ooh, food. Dummy. So I'm still looking for a place to mine because I'm low on some resources. After this horde night, I do want to go back towards 000. So for day 88, I decided to chill with the seals and just make as much potions as I can because going into that fortress, I'm pretty sure I am going to be infected non-stop. So for day 89, I started working on potions. While my glass was being made and stuff like that, I was just pushing seals into water. I just pretty much spent this day making a bunch of potions too. 
I had a nice four stacks of potions. Nothing can possibly go wrong right. with that many. So I just continued looking for a place until it got dark. For day 90, I finally found a place to mine and I threw away my silk touch pickaxe. I threw it away because I was like, I probably won't need it anymore considering I have all of the gobber that I need. But I was afraid of needing it anyway in some kind of situation. So I picked it back up after I made some torches. For a long time, I pretty much just spent getting a nice amount of gold, diamonds, and I met up with my favorite person. But I'm a little bit paranoid, so I didn't like this encounter that I had. I swear, once I already have like all the diamonds I need, I find diamonds, diamonds over there. I find diamonds like so easily. At the beginning, where I need them the most. Never, whoa. You have to stop doing that. You you have to. It legitimately scares me when you do that. I just turn around and just see this entity in front of me. So usually Goblin Trader, he never really scares me, but because of the situation that I'm in and how close I am to finishing 100 days, he's scaring me when he just pops up out of nowhere. Now I did throw away my Protection 3 book in order to make more space, which I don't know why I do these things. I could have just applied the Protection 3 to one of my armor pieces and increase the protection that I have. But instead, I just throw it away because why not? I made more golden apples and I did find yet another spawner. I, I'm pretty sure I found, what, what is this? Like three spawners? That's a lot. The chest had nothing at all nothing useful i also wasn't going to sleep this night mainly because i wanted to use as much time as i possibly could in order to get as much as i possibly can need as much as i can get once i felt like the day has shifted i started digging up oh, oh the sun has risen so once i got out of the mines i started smelting my gold we're in the final stretch i have to be ultra prepared i cannot go wrong i made a promise inside of my last video that i will survive 100 days there will be no dying day 99 or day 100. I will survive. So after making all of my golden apples and my gobber ingots, I started running back towards 000. I did need coal. That way I can see because when it's nighttime and it's raining, it's a lot harder to see. So I did get some coal. That way I can make some torches. When I started traveling across water, it was starting to get really dark and I was afraid of the horde night starting while I was in the middle of nowhere. But I saw some land, and by the time I reached the land, it started. Two of them spawned just now? Whoa! Fuck! I cannot see. Come on, you gotta die. Too many in the mid coming. Okay. There's way too many other men being spawned. Really? From that far away? 
Another one. You have to be kidding me, man. What is that? That I don't I don't like whatever that is in the water. I need a boat. This guy could leave me alone, man. Just more Endermen. I don't like whatever that is in the water. We're gonna have a crafting table on me. Oh, yet another one. Nice. Sunrise, man. Wonderful. Just wonderful. I can't see, I can't move. Up. Come on, stop teleporting. Jesus Christ. Jesus, man. Oh. So I managed to survive. It ran through my resources. My armor is damn near broken and I have absolutely no idea where I am. This should be the last time that I have to repair my armor too. There's only one more horde night that I have to survive. That horde night, crazy. I, I thought for sure I was done, for sure. I thought I was absolutely donezo. But since I'm just better, I did not fold. Now, I found another village, but it didn't have anything. So I just took out the iron golem because again, I'm just too lazy to mine iron. And then I continued traveling until it was dark. I'm only going towards one place and that's back to zero, zero, zero. 
zero. So now I have to spend however many days just to get back to where I need to go. So for day 93, I didn't do anything. It was literally nothing eventful besides me just traveling. And day 94 was the same, except for at the day of day 94, I ran into like a flock of infected phantoms. Those also weren't hard to deal with. And after I killed the phantoms, I went to sleep on this small, small land. For day 95, I saw something interesting. I don't know if this is rare, but I saw a deep slate oh. hole. Never seen this before. I can't tell if this is rare or not. I, I honestly don't know, but I'm intrigued. I'm going to pick it up. I think it's cool. I eventually made it back to that one village where the beehives were. And one of the beehives still have yet to make any resin. And I also found out that the resin goes deeper than just one block. When I tried to check out the other beehive that had some resin, resin I was interrupted. <laughs> After getting settled, I made some more shears. And the morning of day 96, I tried to go back to the beehive. I just want some amazing man. Once again, interrupted by these enemies after cleaning them up though. I go to the beehive and I find out that the little storage for the resin actually goes deeper than one block. So I probably could have had that resin a lot earlier if I knew this. So I try to go into the big, big infected land. But big infected land means lots of enemies. I was struggling trying to find any kind of downtime with these enemies, but there is literally none. There is damn near none, really. If you throw down a bunch of purity potions, you can get some kind of breathing room. That way you aren't accidentally activating any of the blue mold, like, I don't know, with the little sensors, I guess. I couldn't do much for 96. But for 97, I made it my mission to travel across this huge blue land. As soon as I started going through it, one of the endermen spawned. That's not good, how is it?
No way, is that one? I, I really wish I could kill these things. I would say these are the biggest problems at the Horde. Actually, these are the second biggest problem. My lord, man. So I only need two resin now. That's all I need. I get the two resin. I'm able to make this little purity cube and tackle the fortress no problem. Oh, this has a lot. I can't move. Holy. Okay. We have six. Nice. After so long, I finally made my first purity cube. Since I had six resin, I only needed two more. That way I can have four of them. And I knew from the beehive that I was just at had two more resin. So I just had to go back there and get it in the morning of day 98. I managed to get it no problem. I didn't have a flock of enemies on me this time. So it was all good. Now all I have to do is just go towards the fortress. I decided to repair my armor because why not? I can. It will 100% be the last time that I have to repair my armor. So instead of going from the middle, I once again just go from the side of the land. That way I don't have huge trouble on me. My man Juan. Hello there, Juan. Why is he out here? I ended up finding a mine shaft. I took the diamonds, but I, for some odd reason, ignored the golden apple. I don't know why. I really don't know why I do these things, but I made it to the fortress. I thought this obsidian wall was going to be like four blocks thick or something like that. It was actually just one block. Never mind. I thought it was a way thicker wall. This place isn't exactly zero, 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 but it always spawns right by zero, zero, zero. Apparently a little bit of the infected heard that they had a visitor and wanted to see what was up I handled that no problem and I wanted to make some more purity potions just to be safe but when I was trying to do so I realized that I don't have any glass, so there's no way that I can make any more purity potions. But I had three stacks anyway, so I should be fine. Now it's just up to me to check out this place and see if I can actually take down the brain. I am glad that the guy is here. Melting touch. Kids day 99 now. I'm gonna have to hurry up and get out of here soon. This is the brain. I had any purified souls. Wait, I can make one. Wood, 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 wood. I need wood.
Wait, I needed that to make this. Fuck, I didn't even think about that. Whatever. This would be worth it more. I wanted to make the sword, but this is more important. destroy the thing it's, it's a waste but you, so you can't destroy the main brain unless you have killed all the other brains which i did not know so now i have to hurry and dig back to the surface and prepare for the last night i don't know where i came from and i am like 50 blocks deep One golden apple left. Kidding me? the dark I have no idea where this guy is Where's my cube? Where's the cube? I don't know where the cube is.
my little guy. Let's get out of this area. Another boss battle for me. <laughs> I really don't want to fight this enemy. Where am I? What? Holy. Okay. I need to get away from the horde if I want to fight this enemy though. I hope that I touch no teleport things and he just follows me. I need to kill this enemy. Wherever he is. Yeah, it's good. Can't get me from here. the Enderman. Where is he? Well, it appears that he really got himself lost. I legitimately have no idea where he went. Is that the broken nether portal from before? It's a different one. You know what? Because of this, it's perfect timing. I have one last thing to do. did it. Now, I've done it. I've done my goals. I've defeated I don't know how many Endermen. I got a sword. I explored zero, zero, zero. And most important of all, I survived a hundred days for the first time. I legitimately survived a hundred days. I killed seven of the Skulk Endermen. Okay. Ah, there we go. Number of deaths. Zero. <laughs> oh. Well, that's it. I did it. I survived all 100 days without dying. No excuses on dying. But I actually survived. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. And if you didn't, leave a like and subscribe. Let's hope the next one don't take long.